Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss about graphite flex size analysis. Okay, in day-to-day -day exploration, especially for graphite, uh, flex size is very much important uh, aspect to which is directly related to the quality and uh, rate of graphite. Like uh, for any flaky minerals, like uh, which are associated with cyst belts, which form fabric, cystose fabric. Amongst them, graphite is most important economic uh, resource. The size of graphite flex is directly related to its crystallinity, purity, and of course, it has potential in use performance depending upon the flex size. It it's making the analysis crucial in uh, in industry and it relies on high quality graphite so we'll explore in this what are the different techniques used for accurate analysis of flex size because <clears throat> there are ab about nine techniques by which you can have idea about graphite flex overall as, as you must be knowing there are, we have classified different types of <coughs> uh, graphite flakes like very for in order of increasing the size from fine powder then small flakes medium flakes large and jumbo flakes in uh, either by mesh or micron you can uh, describe fine powder means less than 200 mesh minus 200 means mesh means in inch per inch 200 holes are there and like that in any 200 mesh when that material goes through that passes through that that is called minus 200 and those sides which are not passing through that 200 mesh will be two plus 200 mesh okay so for example less than 75 micrometer size generally passes through that 200 mesh so less than 200 uh, 75 micron always will be minus 200 more than 75 micron will always be plus 200 mesh likewise medium flex size is uh, categorized as a range of 150 to 180 micron size that is more than uh, 100 mesh okay then 80 mesh means it is a generally about 180 micron and jumbo flex means more than 300 micron it is easy to remember right micron because it can directly physically you can have idea in metric system you can visualize so this is if see these are the 300 micron more than 300 micron the jumbo size flex how does it look like it's totally separated so there are various methods of flex size analysis we'll be discussing one by one and and compare each each of the methods and their positive and negative aspects especially all are having positive aspects definitely but limitations okay so first we must understand the <coughs> several factors which can influence the final flake size distribution so from geological source naturally also there are different type of deposits which can show variation some deposits are naturally by nature it is small flake size graphite some are very good quality graphite deposits like uh, in africa there is a company lindy jumbo in lindy area they are operating and there there from their name itself you can understand there that that area graphite flakes are very jumbo size most of them so likewise other than geological natural source mining and processing techniques sometimes create problem aggressive processing can break down large flakes into smaller ones and then it can drastically deteriorate the uh, deteriorate the cost and the importance of that deposit and apart from that there are another factor that is chemical or thermal purification process which can also sometimes damage or degrade flakes during their size distribution so we must keep all these things in mind and accordingly caution to should be taken up but overall the choice of method of flex size analysis often depends upon the precision required and particle size range 
and the available equipments most popular and most widely used technique is very simple that is sieve analysis there are all the nine methods are i have tried to make in a tabular fashion in order of decreasing significance of course all are significant but most importantly the sieve analysis is very popular other than that uh, other analysis are having that limitation and specific not that much widely used field but sieve analysis you see it started from 75 micron onwards less than 75 micron you can it is difficult to categorize but all other types like like if you see these are the type of uh, as i have shown jumbo large medium small and fine all size this fine starts from less than 75 so small onwards all flex size can be analyzed by sieve analysis then laser for, for 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 fine very fine optical microscopy it is it is different technique mostly qualitative and very limited use quantification because this is it is giving accurate result but it is slow process definitely by manually you can have to see but image analysis is wide size range sedimentation analysis polar counter all one man one individual will be discussing in upcoming uh, slides so <clears throat> before going into specific individual details we must understand what is the use result of flex size analysis what will be doing with that result for example here i have shown three examples here this is same ac scanning electron microscopy okay so it is giving direct data quantified data of individual flex okay why this width this is length likewise all the data this is 200 micrometer you can see the scale okay similarly normal ordinary microscopy spectroscopy microscopy also can you can have idea from this scale okay but of course from this you can understand this is tedious job on the other hand when that sieving techniques are used so directly you can plot particle size versus cumulative weight for example this is two from two different deposits okay so here you can compare as well so see this is dark color one is r2 and this lighter one gray color is r7 for example the two, two different deposits see this uh, carbon weight percent versus the opening size also distribution also you can see see this this dark one this deposit are two deposits are mostly jumbo size flex are more whereas in r7 deposits this is the more this is maximum so this is medium or fine uh, moderate type of graphite flex okay so this is the difference you, you must understand deposit to deposit it can vary so what you will do so first cumulative distribution and then mass percentage of each fraction this must be analyzed okay so let us start with sieve analysis especially dry sieving because all the graphites you have to yeah, sun by using sun light you can have dried up that uh, graphite so that that flex are uh, without any cohesion it can be grinded but of course caution caution must be taken up because this less than 75 micron you can it is not of any use so as you must be knowing you already know with increasing flex size rate of graphite and demand of graphite is of course very high as much as higher uh, flex size its rate is also very high so procedure is that you have to dry it up that sample and then uh, you, you that in a stacking pattern in order of decreasing mesh size you have to stack all the sieve and then at the top you can have to you have to keep that uh, broken particles all the graphite flex they mix up then sieves are mechanically or manually shaken for a period of around 10 15 even more min, uh, times 10 15 minutes or more then material will be <coughs> passes through different sieves in order of percentage of uh, different types of uh, size ranges available within that mixed material 
and in likewise this will be automatically separated according to their size ranges and the material retained on each sieve is collected and weighted to determine the direct mass percentage of graphite in each size fraction. So this is very important and very advantageous because it is simple, cost effective and a widely accepted technique in industry and which provides a direct correlation between flex size and mass. Okay. And less effective for very fine particles in less than 75 micron. However, our main target in any way, anybody, everybody will be interested in more than 75 micron, micron range only. Very fine is already having very uh, less cost. So, next one is lesser diffraction. Lesser diffraction, these are the sophisticated techniques. These are mostly used for where that sieve cannot be operational. Like when that uh, all the flex size, most of the flex size are below 10 at 100 micrometer. Yeah? In those cases, for further subdivision, further categorization, these laser detection techniques are used where the graphite samples is dispersed, dispersed in either a liquid medium or in air dry system. Then a laser beam is passed through the dispersed particle, the intensity of angle of scattered light after interaction with that material that scattered light are measured by the detectors and then sophisticated different mathematical modeling are, is, uh, is there. there is, for that different softwares are also available. It can be computer by computing. Directly it can use my, my, my theory and sorry for my pronunciation. Then uh, Fraunhofer approximation this is applied to calculate the particle size distribution okay, from diffraction pattern. Okay, so uh, it is having certain advantages because it provides continuous particle size distribution with high resolution precision, hmm? especially for very finer particles. And of course, limitation, you can see this requires specialized equipment, which is often expensive. And industry, for our normal industry purpose, uh, especially for battery industry, flex size is most important. As we, uh, our main objective is to get higher flex size so you don't have that much interested in uh, further subdivision in finer particles so it assumes that particles are spherical which may not be always the case for any type of such smaller finer division subdivision always it is uh, hypothesized that uh, flex size flakes are sub spherical but as we have told that flake flake term itself indicate it is one dimension is of course more than other dimensions then most another popular technique and most common technique but of course it is it is tedious job it is optical microscopy because for industrial use for bulk material huge commodity you cannot <coughs> you cannot uh, utilize this of course by optical microscopy you can have overall visual measurements for graphite flex especially for large flex more than 150 micro like see you, if you see this is already shown no? this purpose of flex size analysis so the goal of graphite flex size analysis is to categorize like this so in a, in a thin section of slide you can have different parameters okay like <coughs> this is L L means actual length of graphite okay this is the like this kind of convex or concave shape uh, this way, this part is convex. So this is the x direction. This is the maximum. Uh, that is major axis. This is minor axis. Minor axis is made by making two tangents from two extreme. This part and this part. Then that distance y. Okay. You can pause and then see all the parameters. And with all the parameters directly, you can have full idea about the graphite flex size. This, this is the area, A means area, P means actual peripheral, peri, peri, perimeter length or circumference length of graphite. So all these parameters are very much essential and these are very best uh, studied under microscope only. This is as I have told, uh, different flex size. Hmm? 
So optical microscopy here it is the advantage because it, 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 it allows direct observation of individual flakes and their morphology, shape, surface characters, everything in crystal clarity you can get directly. It is useful for assessing flake integrity, integrity and possible defects. See here, this is a reflected light image and huh? you can see here large graphite flakes more than one millimeter even occurring as, as flat plate like crystals with more than 300 micron width okay with angular and rounded edges see both the image you will be amazed and even in under plane polarized light also you can see it can illustrate two here it is illustrating two graphite populations within one sample coarse and fine graphite flakes see these are very fine these are coarse uh, these are lengthy this is very small in length Okay, but of course this is this is having some limitation as well. But the, depending upon the obje uh, objective, you will have to fix the fix your uh, requirements. Okay, so it is labor intensive and time consuming, but of course it will be giving more accurate result. Direct data you can uh, generate. It is subjective as measures are often made manually and limited to small sample size. Huge number of slides. Within a few days, you cannot uh, expect to study. But on the other hand, image analysis by automated optical methods like the scanning electron microscopy and other different type of electron microscopy, automated image analysis techniques use advanced microscopy. A camera system combined with software to analyze flake size and shape in an automated manner. So here graphite samples are just simply sprayed on a flat surface and captured by an imaging system that is optical scanning or electron microscopy. The images are processed directly using software to detect and measure individual flex size and shape. So it is suitable for graphite flex across a wide range of size both coarse and fine. So this is very much essential nowadays and it is the further sophistications and which is just uh, fulfilling the limitations of normal microscopy so it provides as an advantage it provides direct detailed information on size shape parameters different as i have shown length width aspect ratio and it is very fast automated technique which allows analysis of larger samples within a few, very limited time and it requires, of course, sophisticated software. Cost is involved. Definitely, it may be expensive and not suitable for samples that are difficult to disperse properly. Of course, for that different crossing grinding, but with caution, definitely those are required before uh, processing. Now, another techniques are sometimes used is sedimentation analysis. In this method. <laughs> The settling rate of graphite particles in a liquid <coughs> is observed. It is based on Stokes law because Stokes law relates particle size to its sedimentation velocity in a fluid. As the particle size is more, hmm, it, 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 it will flex size is more, it will try to float more. Hmm. So, procedure is that simple here yeah, typically below. 50 micron range particles are most usually importantly used because the graphite sample is dispersed in a liquid then the particles settle over a time and their sedimentation rate is that measured. Particle size is directly calculated based on rate of sedimentation assuming spherical particles. Okay, So of course this is also having some limitation because it assumes spherical particles which may not apply to flaky graphites but as I have already mentioned it is typically uh, apl applicable for less than 15 microns so that that shape doesn't matter very much but of course uh, for such a small thing spherical particle is assumption is not very much erroneous but of course for further perfection it requires precise control of experimental condition like temperature viscosity and these are sophisticated techniques, but overall it is useful for very fine particles that are difficult to measure by sieving, normal sieving. Another technique is Coltrilla counter, like electrical sensing zone. Here, 
it measures particle size by detecting changes in electric resistance as the particle passes through a small aperture. And again, here also these are suitable for very fine, less than 100 micron size ranges. Here graphite sample is dispersed in an electrolyte solution, then the particles are allowed to pass through a small aperture between two electrodes causing, causing changes in resistance. And these changes are proportional to the particle size which is measured by the device. Again here advantage is that it is highly sensitive and precise. It can measure a wide range of particle size but, uh, but it is not well suited for very large flakes which is the limitation and for, for that uh, we have our another techniques. Uh, so it assumes particles are equidimensional which may not hold true for flaky graphite. Again for any types of small scale features, small scale uh, study, very fine particle analysis, there are assumptions must be taken up because here every time for small scale we will have to assume that it is uh, spherical. Another one is air classification. Here uh, it separates particles based on their aerodynamic properties which are influenced by both size and shape. It is often used in conjunction with grinding operation. It is suitable for fine to medium sized graphite flakes or powders. Here particles are suspended in air stream and as you know heavier and coarser particles do settle faster while finer particles remain airborne for longer time. So in a qualitative way these particles are collected different points at different time based on their size. It is effective for separating fine powders. It does not directly provide size distribution data. It is a prime limitation. Typically used as secondary method requires specified specialized equipment. Another one is dynamic light scattering. These are, you can notice that it is getting complicated. Different type of sophisticated techniques now used. DLS measures particle size based on scattering of light as particle undergo brownian motion in a liquid medium this is suitable for very fine particles very fine see below one micron what happened here these procedures these are not about economic aspect direct industrial use need this is sophisticated specific utilization related thing sometimes research related work but as a overall contextual clarity should be maintained hence i am bringing all these things all overall glimpses must be there so here graphite particles are suspended in a liquid, a laser beam again is passed through that suspension and the scattered light is measured over time, okay. And the particle size is calculated based on intensity fluctuation of the scattered light due to Brownian motion, see this is very fine. So here scattering is important. Another technique as I have already we have discussed that is laser diffraction. So diffraction and scattering is not same thing where well, like you, you must have seen in XRD, X-ray diffraction, here it is scattering, okay. Those two things are different, if you want to know further detail, I, I can discuss. Only suitable for very fine particles, high sensitivity and precision for some micron particles for this DLS, scattering. And diffraction means different layering is involved, okay. The, for, as I, as you know graphite, graphite is having different graphene structure, different type of carbon hexagonal different layers. So for in a crystal different layers <coughs> along which uh, light reflected, so that phase difference is important in case of diffraction. Whereas in case of scattering, direct particle size and that that wavelength of that light is important. That when that that are the wavelength and particle size are similar, it gets scattered. Okay, like uh, you see that uh, blue ray, blue colored uh, sky night because uh, at the, the sky at the daytime because all the particles size and blue colored wavelength, blue color light wavelength are matching same. That is why it gets scattered. We see that. Uh, color. We must not uh, discuss further in detail because it is very basic thing. 
Now, and last one but not least, XRD, which is very common to understand minerals, but in direct way, XRD also can be utilized for crystallite size, not direct flake size. While XRD is not typically used to measure physical flake size, it can provide information indirectly about the crystallite size, which is related to the quality and purity of graphite. So in this procedure, as you must be knowing, normal XRD technique, and which is the procedure, I am not going to into this. And it is not directly related to physical flex size, but com complement size analysis with structural information. So with this, I would like to stop this discussion here. And uh, next topic, I will be definitely discussing in intense detail with Raman spectroscopic characterization because these are the sophisticated techniques which are very much important nowadays and it will be providing definitely very essential information. So at a glance if we see you can pause and you can see the all the comparisons of this uh, all the methods all the nine methods I have made in the tabular form key applications suitable size ranges and applicability. So I hope you have understood. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And we'll be definitely we'll be discussing soon about Ramon spectroscopic characterization, which is going to be very.